Hello everybody, this is Tony Turner and welcome to the market now as of about noon Eastern on Friday, April the 6th. Well, U.S. stock indexes are lower so far today as renewed fears of a trade conflict between the United States and China outweighed a lower than expected March jobs data that eased concerns over aggressive rate hikes. And on that news, let's move on to three charts that could give us some insight to a <laughs> some insight into the week to come. First of all, as we normally do, we're going to look at our chart of the S&P 500 spider, symbol SPY. This is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our S&P 500 benchmark index. And we follow this because most stocks, most, not all, but most stocks will follow the S&P 500's movement. So let's right now look at this daily chart. On this chart, the red line is the 20-day moving average. The green line is the 50-day moving average. And the black line is the 200-day moving average. These are all simple moving averages. Now we know that the SPY closed an all-time high of $286.56 on January 26th. That's about 2865 on the S&P 500 itself. Since then, we have had quite a ride. Uh, it, it, it moved down dramatically on February 9th to its 200-day moving average around a little below 256. Has moved back up uh, to retrace some of that. Made a little tiny double top here in the process then fell back down to its 200-day moving average in the last couple of weeks. And it has kind of been waltzing along that line, deciding whether it's got the strength to stay above it or not. Now, when I captured this chart today, the SPY was trading at $262.30, which is about $26.23 on the S&P 500 itself. Now, yesterday's high, yesterday's high could now act as resistance. That comes in at 266.64. And as you also see, the 20-day moving average is coming down overhead at about the same place. So that's kind of double trouble there for the SPY should it start back up. Of course, it would also have to duke it out with the 50-day moving average, which is coming in at $270 and 64 cents currently. So today, uh, the SPY gap to the downside, again, is now trading at 262.30. And we're looking here at this support. It's held before. Can it hold again on the 200-day moving average? And that's now coming in, if you want to uh, jot this down, if you don't have it on your screen, at $259.06. So we'll be watching this potential support line here. Uh, of course, we have uh, some lows right under that, around 256 and change. We want to make sure, or it would be nice to see, that the S&P 500 could stay above this 200-day moving average as we move into earnings season. And from all the numbers we're hearing, it's supposed to be quite a positive earnings season. So we could have... Uh, well, if, if the bears disagree with this, we could, we could have quite a ride in the next three weeks of earnings season. So stay tuned. Keep an eye on the SPY and make sure st it stays above this $259 line. If it moves below it, I will become much more conservative with all of my positions and probably take a little more cash because a move below it could take the market to another move down, perhaps down toward 248. But, um, but we'll hope in the coming week that doesn't happen. Our next chart today, as we usually do, we're looking at a chart of the PowerShares QQQ. Now, as you know, this is the exchange-traded fund that closely follows our very important NASDAQ 100 index. That's the home of the likes of Amazon, Microsoft, Intel, Apple, Facebook, uh, and uh, Alphabet or Google, as I still call it. OK, now we know the Q's made a really nice all-time closing high. Well, let's see, the closing high here was on March 12th at $174.08. Uh, then it has, since there, it has fallen pretty dramatically down to 
this Wednesday's low at 154.04, once again, like the SPY, the Qs are trading down, nearly down to, not quite as far as the SPY, but nearly down to their 200-day moving average, which now comes in at $153.14. That could act as potential support because price support is right in this area too. So both of those hopefully will be strong enough. Now when I captured this chart today, the Qs were trading at $158.73. As you can imagine, yesterday's high, that would be Thursday's high, is coming in at almost $162. Now that could act as potential resistance to the Qs. And of course today, um, and it might have even been yesterday in the timing here, the 20-day moving average crossed below the 50-day, which is a slight negative for sure, offering a little more resistance up here in the $164 uh, zone. So now we see, just like the SPY, uh, can the Qs, can the big tech stocks remain small, uh, strong enough to keep the Qs above the 200-day moving average as we move into earnings week? And um, one can imagine with all the positive news coming out about earnings, uh, if any of that is fulfilled, surely the Qs will stay above the 200. But this is a wild and volatile market right now, and no one can make any assumptions about where it's going next. So I, for myself, I'll keep an eye on the Qs, and um, fingers crossed it stays above the 200-day moving average at $153. Okay, let's go on and look at our third chart, which is one we haven't looked at in a while. This is the ETFG, Prime Cybersecurity ETF symbol H-A-C-K, very apt to name. Now the top components in this ETF are Rapid7, KEYW Holdings, Verona Systems, Vasco Data Security, Akamai Technology, Palo Alto Networks, all the usual suspects. And as, as I've gone through a lot of sector ETFs in the last few minutes, I've no, I mean, every single one of them, and, and as most stocks have been, have been very volatile because we've had volatility pretty dramatically, actually, for about since February. The whole market has been a lot, as you know, wilder and woolier than it certainly was in the time before that. So the HACK is no different. It's gotten very, very volatile, but it looks like it may be hanging in there for earnings season. Uh, it made a low in, uh, back in August uh, at about 28. From there, it moved into a, not drawing a straight line here, am I? From there, it moved into a fairly decent uptrend, pulled back, circled down to its 200-day moving average, as most things did in February. And from there, it has moved up pretty dramatically, and it moved up to a recent high here of 36.39 on March 13th. And by the way, that was an all-time high for the HACK. It's pulled back from there, back to its 50-day moving average, which is now coming in at $34 and change right here. And as I captured this chart today, the HACK was trading at $35.05. Ideally, for my best entry here, uh, as a trader, ideally, I would like for the hack to pull back <laughs> back here uh, more toward 34.50. But of course, I want it to stay above this 50-day moving average, again, coming in at 34.11. So in the coming week, if it pulls back a little bit uh, and or even if it stays above the 50-day moving average, I may add shares of the HACK to my portfolio. Uh, if it remains above the 50-day in the coming week, I'll be good with it. If I enter it, if it does not, of course, any cross down below the 50-day moving average and close below it, I will be out. As long as the hack stays above the 50-day moving average, I will remain in. So that, that's a pretty simple, uh, that's a pretty, a, a simple trade here, although, of course, it may be very volatile. Uh, cybersecurity stocks tend to be that way, but most of the market is right now. So what I suggest going into a market like this is I suggest using, if it's something you want to even do, 
rem, uh, use small share size and very firm stops. Very firm stops. Okay. Now let's go on to the next week's coming economic reports. But first, please join us this coming Monday, April 9th, for our next session of Tony's Market Club. We'll talk about which side of the market to trade, have a mini trading lesson, and I'll give you stocks and ETFs that may become ripe for high potential trades. This is a low-priced, high-value opportunity to learn more about the market, become a smarter trader, and make more money. So please join us. For those who cannot attend our live session, not a problem. The recording of our session is available a few minutes after the session ends to all of our members. For more information and to join, go to Tony'sMarketClub.com. And now for the coming week's economic reports. We don't have a lot of economic reports that next week, which is a good thing. Uh, I think we've got enough excitement going on. <laughs> on Tuesday, we have the Producer Price Index. On Wednesday, we have the Consumer Price Index and Crude Inventories. Thursday, we have Jobless Claims and Natural Gas Inventories. These are all weekly reports. And on Friday, we'll have the Michigan Sentiment Report. Again, join us for Tony's Market Club this coming Monday. Don't miss out on this terrific opportunity for you to learn more about the market, become a better trader, and make more money. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.